welcome to the Unusual Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I don't know what woke means. I'm so... Oh, oh, oh. It's okay, it's okay. We're all getting all in our own special way. Do you know what woke means? Nope. Brother. Uh, but still, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 8, Episode 4, Fake It Till You Make It. In this episode, when Fluttershy looks after Rarity's main head and duty, she takes on a series of characters to cope with the intimidating clients. So, yeah, this sounds like a really fun episode. I would hope comments until later. <laughs> so, anywho, um, let's get into first impressions. So, Silver, what do you think of said episode? Well, torn on things because Fluttershy is adorable in many, many ways, and it's fun to see her adopt multiple personas. But why these personas all turn out to be horrible and abusive is a bit confusing. It's like there's this tilting point, in, or rather a tipping point, in the episode where Fluttershy goes too far, and I'm like, what inspired this? She was doing just fine. And it's never totally addressed. There's some great humor, especially in the firing of the Fluttersonas, but it also ties into this realization I had after we reached the halfway point of season eight. This first half of the season, the main six are really unpleasant. They're very resistant to events and trying to foil other people's, uh, sorry, other ponies' joy. And I'm just like, that's not the main six I know and have celebrated these last couple of years. I see what you mean. The character shifts does seems a bit odd, like especially with most of the characters. Like, what, uh, last week we had Pinkie Pie and her overly, whatchamacallit, um, her character is... Competitive? Yeah, competitive or resistance to uh, Mudbriar. Like, usually Pinkie would be the first one to go all in in trying to make a friend. But I don't know with this one, like, she kind of gave up. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And Fluttershy here, I, I won't say that she gave up or changed, but I think I think she's been hanging around with Discord too much. <laughs> He's playing the long game. He's going to make Fluttershy his qu- queen of chaos. Oh, she's going to eat it all up. She's going to eat it all up. And, well, let's see. As for me, this episode was a fun one because uh, I like the range of characteristics that um, Andrea did for Fluttershy. And, I don't know, it seems one of... Uh, if, if, if I remember right, when I when we first saw it, I messaged you saying that, oh my god, this is so awesome, like, this is one of the best episodes I've seen in my life, kind of situation. And after re-watching it again... I have to say, it still holds up in terms of the fun factor. Good. That is what an episode should do. Although, I remember you sounded a bit like uh, Chester A. Bum. Oh my god, this is the greatest episode I've ever seen in my life! Yep, yep. Uh, But anywho, uh, let's get into it. So anyway, uh, if you guys at home have not seen this episode yet, pause here. Welcome back. How do you enjoy the episode? Like it? So here's what we think. So the episode starts with a picnic by the sanctuary or at the sanctuary where Fluttershy and her furry friends are having their snacks. And Angel Bunny is being a demanding butthole. Oh, so it's a day ending and why? Mm. <laughs> As in, why did she choose him for a pet? Well, I don't know. <laughs> but... All that comes to a halt when Rarity comes in screaming for help. And yes, the reason why she's screaming for help is because she's panicking. And the reason why she's panicking is because she has a fashion show to do and there's no one to take care of the shop. The shop where she'll drop. And here's the funny part. Like, <laughs> Fluttershy says yes to helping her and... Uh, Fluttershy's shocked that uh, she did it as anyone else. And here we have a flashback to ponies that Rarity asked. From Rainbow Dash to Pinkie Pie to Twilight to AJ to Starlight, even Big Mac. 
Shirley, Granny Smith, DJ Pong Tree, the CMCs, and even Maud and Boulder. Of course, Boulder would do a great job. You try and shoplift, Boulder will strike you down. Yep. But it's one of those scenarios where I like this joke. This joke is like, oh, Rarity says, it says something about Rarity's opinion about Fluttershy. I like this more than when she invited Applejack to be a judge of a fashion show. He's like, why would you do that? It makes no sense. Okay, yeah, Fluttershy, we acknowledge she's a good friend, but she can't, she doesn't handle stress all that well. And this will be a stressful job. Mm -hmm. Ain't no shame in in not trying to force this on her or saving her to the very last. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, this is the very, very last. If you're asking the CMCs to take care of your store, there's something wrong. And you're actually violating child labor law. In Equestria, what's that? A very good question, Norman. <laughs> I don't even know if they enforce it. But if so, there's something wrong with this country. <laughs> but anywho, in the next scene, we are at Rarity's store in Manhattan. Um, Rarity explains that this section is for hip, this section is for cool, and this section is for swag. So, um, everything is here. You watch this, this is what you do. You ring the cash register, you wrap it, you put it in a bag, and you tie it in a beautiful bow and send the customer off. Talking about customers, here's the first one. And this customer is strange. Oh, that's going to be a common theme. Mm hmm. Although, if I may, we, I think we skipped one little thing mm-hmm. that I uh, find interesting. Fluttershy shows a teapot um, wow. cover or jacket. I think it's a cozy. It's supposed to look like an elephant, but it's, it does not. It does not work. It does not work. And I find it kind of funny because after that, after this episode, everyone was like, but Fluttershy is a freaking knowledge of sewing. Why does it look that bad? <laughs> Two others replied, oh, but it's crochet. That's different from sewing. It's like, okay, that is a very valid point. Yeah, but... Why is she cro- crocheting when she knows sewing? I don't know. But isn't that knitting in the comics? And also comics. <laughs> no, it, it, this was in uh, Suited for Success. Oh, yeah, sewing. Oh, yeah, sorry, my bad. But is it picking on fashion and practicing fashion different? More just wondering where she, where her technical skill went uh, yeah. in between episodes. Fluttershy is better than this. Oh, yeah. yeah. You do not diminish the Fluttershy. Oh, true that, true that, true that. But anywho, first customer wants, let's just say that she's Miss Opposite because whatever she wants is the total opposite of what she wants. And Fluttershy is really, really confused with this statement. And, well, Rarity comes in to save the day by presenting her with a dress, and said Pony loves it, rings the cash register, and sends her way out. That's right. On your way, your contradiction horse. <laughs> and Fluttershy asks, how do you do it? Like, how do you even do it? And Rarity says, you know what? Try striking a pose. Maybe that will work. And Fluttershy just falls on her face. Yep, nope. Um, the assistant comes out saying that, hey, we're going to be late. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And then Rarity says, uh, yeah, we have, we have to. But you know what, Fluttershy? Don't worry. Uh, we got your fuzzy little raccoon, Rocket, and Rocket Jr., and also Boomer. Yeah, we, they're all here. So they're going to help you somehow. Yes. So don't worry. And also, you know what? Here's an idea. Why don't you play dress up? Maybe that will boost your confidence. Yes. Yes. So, okay. Bye-bye. Also, we get to see Blue Bobbin once again, who is voiced by Catelyn Barristow. And I had the pleasure of uh, both talking with her at Winnie City. We were on a panel together, and I kicked her in the face. What? 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 Why, how, how, what? Yes. I, I get it in really. But we were playing uh, a game of whose line is it anyway? Oh. Uh, with a- AC Racepest and Saber Spark. And there was a. Uh, there was a, a scene where you take on the pose of the other players as you swap in. Mm-hmm. And so I ended up giving the karate kick of friendship because <laughs> that's just how things worked out. Someone took a screenshot and posted it on Twitter where it looks like I'm giving her an actual <laughs> Aikiba. <laughs> and, and, you know, she sees the tweet and she finds it delightful. She says, that's one of the highlights. Oh. And it's just like, well, I'm, I'm glad you think so. I do not mean to uh, yeah. to imply assault, but 
That's kind of funny. You know what, Silver? Uh, it seems that your hippogriff lifestyle is um, kind of meddling in your real lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Uh, the chaos is the constant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, well. So I'm just happy to see Blue Bobbin again, if only for a minute. Yeah. But still, those are going to be coming back again and again. Kicks to the face, I hope oh, not. No. That just sounds I mean, characters. Violent. Oh, boy. But anywho. Okay, good, good, good. Carrying on. Don't, don't, um, don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah, carrying on. Fluttershy is left alone for her own devices, and a customer comes in. This customer reminds me of that one fashion guy that does the fashion show on the fashion channel. Uh, I, I'm afraid I don't watch fashion sh- shows and channels, yeah. so I'm in the dark. Yeah, it looks like him. I don't know, but you know what? I'm not really sure. But so, anywho, um, this guy is just looking at this one suit and asks the thread count. And if it's under 1,000, I'm not going to buy it because it's beneath me. And Fluttershy here, oh, praise her little soul, uh, tries to count the threads one by one. And the raccoon says, no, cut it, cut it, cut it out. And yeah, Fluttershy <laughs> goes into the back room in a dizzy panic. Just destroy him, Mistress Fluttershy. Crush him with your adorableness. <laughs> yeah. And to solve this problem of being afraid and, well, to overcome her shyness of this situation, she decides to put on a costume and act out a persona. And, yeah. A pony-sona, if you will. Yay, pony-sona. So, anywho, uh, this persona is one of those, where's this Manhattan Knights? No, not really, right? Well, where, what did she call? Uh, Elite Snob. Yeah, Elite Snob. So, I, I think they had a name. Saddle Row something, whatever. Yeah. So, anywho, um, Fluttershy put on this persona of a snooty, I know better than you kind of character. And it works. Yes. Um, the pony took three shirts or three coats and he is on his way. Yay, much awesomeness. And yeah, um, it seems like this is going to work, right? What could go wrong? What indeed? Mm-hmm. We cut to Rarity, trying to catch the train, and she overhears some ponies talking about, oh, if the caretaker or clerk doesn't meet my standards, I am going to throw a fuss. <laughs> and yeah, Rarity panics and tries to run back to the shop. And meets up with the guy that bought the suit, saying that Fluttershy did a good job and she has nothing to worry about. So yay! Uh, with that, Rarity has confidence in Fluttershy's work. And leaves her to, un- to her own devices. Hmm. And yet, it continues from there. Yes, there's no peace for the Fluttershy. Mm-hmm. Here's the funny thing. If there's a fashion show going on, you'd think that everyone would be invested in watching that rather than going to a shop and watching the old fashions. Invitation only kind of situation? Very possible, but... There is some manner of television in Equestria, isn't there? I'm not sure. Like I know... I know they have big screen TVs, at least, because yeah. that makes sense. Yep, yep. but I, I don't know, man. Like, usually fashion shows are for the rich and wealthy, and these boutiques are usually to, you know, buy affordable clothes. But hey, what do I know? So let's carry on. So Fluttershy is doing a great job selling clothes and whatnot, and yeah, customers are happy. And it seems that Fluttershy here is pushing the character a bit because it seems that she's going cray cray because a customer is asking for jewelry for what bowl and glam something like that and Fluttershy says nah you want pointy pointy is good for you and gives the whole display on the pony like well what well, hey she got the point yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then well yeah seems things are going her way things are going her way sales are being made that's good so, um, we are introduced to a new customer. Like, this customer is so hipsterish, like. Valley girl. Yeah, because, like, she's so undecisive with what she wants. Like, you know? Like, I know, but maybe you should go back to mom, dad, and, like, get a budget. Or better yet, like, get a job <laughs> so you can get, buy your own clothes. <laughs> your freeloader. <laughs> like. <laughs> I am feeling some repressed emotions here, Silver. Well, what can I say? I mean, this sort of attitude, anyone who uses five or six likes in the middle of a sentence, I instantly worry for them. (laughs) Uh, But anywho, 
Um, in this situation, Fluttershy panics and goes to the back room and does another costume change. Like, this is so much awesomeness. She's like feeling the persona of the client and knows what she wants. Like, this is much awesomeness. Like, I know it's great, right? Like, totally. Yeah. So, like, she goes to... But what does woke mean? I don't What does woke mean? I don't know, man. Uh, just accept it. We don't know and move on. I can't. I can't accept this level of oldness yet. <laughs> I have to know. What does woke mean? Uh, like, if you guys know what it means, do um, post it down in the comments below. Like, we'll read it. And why I'm having a sudden twang. So, like, Fluttershy goes up to this one pony who's all, like, dark and stuff. And, yeah, it's time for another costume change. And I love this costume change. Goff Shy is best shy. Yes, this is my favorite of the Fluttershies as well. The darkness will match your soul. Yes. Uh, this is just fun. And, yeah, uh, when Dark Shy comes out, uh, we can, we, yeah. Um, yep. Chaos ensues. Yep, 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 yep. Blackness is just filling my soul. Mm-hmm. And... Mm-hmm. That, that's some good gothy darkness. <laughs> mm. Uh, so... Let's try and, well, rush through this because most of this are kind of repeating. So Fluttershy does costume change faster than any Kamen Rider can do. And yeah, uh, once the raccoons slip up, they accidentally spill a bit of tea onto Fluttershy's hoof. And yeah, Fluttershy schools them and calls them rodents. And yeah, the, the, the raccoon are noticeably indignant yeah, they, they are pissed off and they go to ponyville to tell on fluttershy like they go to twilight and talk about this and stuff like yeah they are really not feeling this no one likes a snitch yeah you know what they say about stitches right yes snitching is pitching no 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 snitches snitches got stitches get stitches i oh, see i'm see again i'm behind the times i'm quoting c live 2021 oh <laughs> which uh, well, but still, do you do you remember Sea Lab twenty twenty one? Oh man, I heard of it, but I've <laughs> never seen it. I'm. It's because I'm old, 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 old. Sea uh, Life what twenty twenty one? Yes, it's hilarious. Well, so we have to remember. It's electrifying. Uh, you have to remember. I'm in a part of the world where probably I won't have the same show that you watch. How rough I say. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, but anywho, uh, getting back on track, the coons go Never. to the, well, I won't say this is a castle, it's more like the school of friendship. It's the school of snitches. <laughs> yeah, so the coons tell, or charade, their concern to Spike and Twilight, and uh, it seems that Spike gets all of what they're saying. And Twilight asks, like, how in the hell do you understand what they're saying? And... Spike just says, I'm not the charade champion for nothing. It's a, it's an indicator of his upcoming awesomeness as he ascends to the winged. <laughs> yeah. So, anywho, as the, as, um, as Twilight and her friends go to Rarity's boutique in Manhattan, they get to see Fluttershy in action. And oh my goodness, like, she is terrible. Like, she's not even trying to sell anything. She's being flutter mean. We've got our turn of putting your hoof down. Yep, yep. But ah, that, that's totally different. That was on her accord, own accord. This is just play acting, but still. Uh, oh, this is method acting. Yep, yep, yep. And, every, and everyone knows that method acting is bad because he, he, Heath Ledger. Yep, and Gerard Leto and stuff. Yeah. And that guy who played the Joker in Suicide Squad and made everybody mad at him. Gerard Leto. That's the guy. He also played in Brittler Arena. And that shows how good I am with names. Yep. But anywho, um, this section here, this part here, I like. Because I'm, I'm just going to go through everything here. She rags on Rainbow Dash, calling her a small town pony. She calls Applejack a simpleton. She, let's just say that she's very, very mean to her friends. And when it comes to Twilight... Like, oh, Twilight. Let, yes, let's talk about this. Let, follow me. Let's talk about this. Let's, this is the front door. Don't just slam. <laughs> I love it. Oh, you, 
You did not just slam Princess of Friendship. Oh, she did. She did. Right? Off with her head. Wait, no, it's Fluttershy. Oh, the conflict. Yeah. But, oh my goodness, I this scene here, I enjoy just because of how Fluttershy, like, all those repressed feelings from eight years or so, it's just like, Fluttershy is releasing it now. <laughs> Poisoning everything about her personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still. Uh, so, well, Fluttershy may be... <laughs> so, Fluttershy is in a situation where uh, she's... Well, I won't say beyond help. So, the main five goes to Rarity and tells... Hmm, not even five. Well, let's spike, so that's five. So, yeah, the main five goes to Rarity and says that Rarity... We have a problem. Fluttershy is going cray cray at your shop and she's being very mean to all of us. And she even called the raccoons rotents. Like, that's not normal. And yeah, Rarity joins them and goes to the boutique to see what's going on. And yeah, Fluttershy is doing a bad job. And well, with any bad job, Rarity fires Fluttershy and fires Fluttershy and fires Fluttershy. (laughs) Oh yes, the... That was actually my favorite part, is as uh, Fluttershy's personas just walk on screen. This girl is bending space and time to her whims. Like I said, she's been hanging around with Discord too much. That's why she's going to be the queen of chaos. And just ship it and accept it. I know. But at the same time, too, we forget about Pinkie Pie. She does the break. Uh, she does the breaking of the fourth wall all the time. But yeah. But she cannot do this even Peaky cannot change costumes that fast mm. and she'd just be like dang girl how you doing that yep yeah. so yeah uh, after the multiple firings of the Fluttershy's I remember Fluttershy says that she's sorry and she went overboard and says to the coons that she didn't mean it and it was all part of the character and we're sorry they forgive her which is good but at the same time I'm just like Is no one going to question how she did this? I truly believe that one of Fluttershy's parents may be a changeling. Uh, No, I I don't know. But I'm just going to say that she's hanging out with Discord a bit too much. So yeah, there's that. Changeling parents. Uh, uh, My bet is on the dad. (laughs) Oh, No comment on that one. But anywho, um, with everybody saying they're sorry and uh, acceptance... Uh, Rarity gets inspiration and sews the perfect dress or the perfect dress was it? Oh, the self-confidence dress. Yeah, yeah. So she sews it and displays it at the shop and this one pony says, huh, why are you showing it here and not at the uh, gala or something like that? Like, are you trying to snub the gala? And whew, in a strength, in a warrior Fluttershy comes out and says, Have you considered the possibility of the Royal Fashion Show is trying to undercut rarities by con- continuing on in Canterlot and not moving the whole affair here? Okay, no, make that sound again. Which one? Give us that hmm again. <laughs> that sounds like a really weird engine right <laughs> uh, so, we We've solved the world energy crisis. It's Norman Sanzo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, boys. But anywho, with that, Pony got shut down, yo. And Fluttershy confidently walks away, and yay! Rarity has her concerns, but yay, inner strength, remember? Yay. <laughs> Just like, like a boss. Yep. And episode ends. And you know what? I worry for Fluttershy's mate. Well, I don't think we'll have to worry about that within the shield. Yep. But if you think about it, Every time when Fluttershy puts on a costume, she acts a very specific way. Remember last um, Nightmare Nights when she dresses up like a vampire bat pony? Yep. I'm seeing a pattern here. So, yeah. Mm. Well, you know, maybe they'll uh, just be really into role play. Yep, yep, yep. So, anywho. Oh, someone get an exorcist. (laughs) So, anywho. What do you think of this episode, Silver? What do you do with it? Strange episode. Uh, It's fun. I mean, that's part of it. But like I say, I just want to give a quick overview of the season, you know, overall. Last last episode, we had Pinky trying to, well, not break up Mudbriar and Maud, but resisting the idea of them being an item. Next episode, Rainbow Dash is going to try and shut down 
Granny Smith and company having a fun time. Well, there is reason for that one, and I don't think that she's at fault for those. But you know what? That is for next week's problem. And then we have to jump a little bit ahead because less problems when the CMC and Starlight are be are the main characters. But then you get to uh, non compete clause, and I think we can all agree that was not Rainbow Dash and Applejack's finest hour. Yep. Yep. So we have this this trend where the main six, instead of working to help someone or get a, accomplish a goal to enhance the world around them, they seem to be resisting the world, in a sense. They seem to be trying to make it stop and bend to their will, which is the opposite of what I think we've seen in a lot of seasons. Usually, they want to achieve a goal that will hopefully enhance the world around them, and then they encounter resistance, both in the form of ponies with op- conflicting goals or their own fallibilities. And then, when I look at all this, it's funny that f- even though I'm criticizing all these, Fluttershy is the one who's the most actively mean-spirited in her episode, <laughs> even if it's method acting, yeah, the greatest evil of all. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I see what you mean because uh, I haven't really noticed the whole part about the ponies becoming their own villain or protagonist, uh, antagonist. And after well, doing a season eight review for a few times now, I do notice it now. And it's one of those scenarios where you have to really think about it because in Fluttershy's case, her characteristics kind of is a bit different in terms of how she accepted Mud Briar. But with Fluttershy here, I don't blame her that much because it's better than the um well, okay, usually we get the what, uh super shy Fluttershy where she's the always meek and getting poke fun at Fluttershy or she's the bully shy where she's becoming the big bully. In this one it's a Heart line to toe because she is kind of a bully, but it's not on her own accord. Uh, we already had an accord arc that was in the comics. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where the personality got out of hand and she, well, went wild with it, which does happen to some people. Um, for example, for the popular one was Gerard Leto... Um, Heath Ledger, Jim Carrey in uh, Man on the Moon. Those are a few. I never got to see Man on the Moon. It's an interesting tale. Like, I don't really know if I should recommend it or not. Hmm. But anyway, yes. That's something for the end of the year when we recommend movies to one another. Oh, yeah, but uh, Man on the Moon was a really old, old, old show. Yeah, but so anyway, uh, let's see. I don't know. This episode for me was fun. The character was fun. The episode was fun. It was all fun. Like, getting to see Fluttershy being, I won't say mean, but releasing her frustration with her friends was fun to watch. Attitude. Yeah. She's, she's got, oh, you got that fine flutter too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, well, sorry to take your fire, Silver. You have anything more to say? I've been fired? Oh, no. Ah, oh, the tragedy. No. There's really not a whole lot else to say. The The other characters, they do fine, but they're not the focus. They're in it for a very, very brief period of time. Just to say, Fluttershy, wake up. Come back to us, Fluttershy. We're not a cute show without you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but still, but still, this episode was a lot of fun. That's all I have to say. Um, any complaints that I would give it? No, not really. Well, okay, there is that part where suddenly Fluttershy don't want to sell anything in the shop. Like, where did that come from? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so th- thank you. You're reminding me of my own, what I what I said we were going to oh, talk yeah. about. What, why, why did she suddenly start saying these weren't good enough for people? Maybe. I don't get it. Maybe the personas are intermingling and saying that people don't deserve this. They're beneath the clothes. You know what? I don't know. It, it it came out of left field. That, that's all I have to say. Although, now that I think about it, there is an episode of South Park where Cartman gets uh, a theme oh, park. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Well, he, he makes it so you're 
no, he boasts that no one else gets to use this except me. Mm-hmm. But because of cost and all that, he has to start hiring people. And it's in some ways marketing genius because you tell people they can't have something and they will go out of their way. You know, just because of creating a have and have not mentality. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's something that Fluttershy is taking on. If I tell them these aren't good enough, they'll want them even more. Yeah. <laughs> but then she she took that too far yeah. as well. But I have to point out one scene here that I highly enjoy, or one transition, is um, in situation at the boutique. It's where, start of the whole madness, where Fluttershy says you can't have anything. And she is a quick change artist. That's why I think she's part changeling. <laughs> uh, but still, but still. You know what? Uh, we could go on for this because we both are shy fans, but yes. So let's um, hit to... Yeah, well, we've already done um, final thoughts. So yeah, what are we going to do next week, Silver? Well, it's time to continue the Legends of Ponies as we look at Legends of Magic, the number two, the appearance of Rocco. Oh, yay! I love that one. That comic was fun. Boy, catcher! Well, I I didn't quite understand you. I heard boy, and I'm thinking Kratos. Yay! No. Well, I just beat God of War, so yeah. So, boy, <laughs> boy, don't get me, make me get my two by four, boy. <laughs> oh, well, that was a fun game. Best dad in the world. I know. Uh, but not. Yeah, but he's learning. Yay! Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe we should do a God of War podcast. That'll be fun. <laughs> Yes, that would be oh, good. But anywho, next week will be the Legends of Magic issue number two, starring Rock Hoof. Yay. Yay, Rock Hoof. Rock Hoof, Rock Hoof, Rock Hoof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, if you like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I like to thank Lurker Cat, Starstream, myself, Lag, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. So, anywho, um, Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me many places. I will be on Equestria Daily, post- posting every Wednesday for reviews. Uh, on Deviant Arts, I post Pinkie Pie Says Goodnights. In fact, I just barely got one out before we had the surprise uh, roller coaster of friendship. Yeah, on the Friday. When it was scheduled to be on a Saturday, like what? <laughs> yes, confusion. Confusion abounds. And uh, if you f- find folks will be in the Baltimore area, this Bronicon, I have been announced as a community guest. Huzzah! Yay, and Jenny. <laughs> and so I will look forward to seeing folks there and having a good time in Baltimore. Yeah, go meet up with him. Go s- uh, say hi. Say that you enjoy his work. Over here on the NBS show and also on his channel. I think mostly you guys could talk about his channel because we got nothing here. <laughs> ah. Oh, come on. We've got the talks from uh, the Patreon sponsored uh, s- exclusive scenes, which believe me, they're juicy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very juicy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my. And, my, my, my. And, well, um, let's see. If you guys go up to Silver and talk about America's AD book, I'm sure he'll like to learn more about it. <laughs> Uh, just just explain to me what woke means and we'll be good. <laughs> what does woke mean? So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the elderly Silver Queen. And we'll guys see you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Huh. On the Urban Dictionary, it says, Although an incorrect tense of awaken, a reference to how people should be aware in current affairs. While you are obsessing with the Kardashians, there are millions of homeless in the world. Stay woke! Okay, let's scream. Well, that just makes me feel bad. Stop making me feel bad, Urban Dictionary! <laughs> <laughs>